So uh, first of all, I'll introduce myself. I'm Dipali Trivedi, and I'm platform architect for Staples, staples.com. Um, and this session, as part of this session, I'm going to share my learnings, my experience, uh, what we did at Staples, and the general application of NoSQL technologies for a uh, scalable e-commerce platform. So if you are here from last uh, two days, you heard a lot about all these different vendors and companies who actually write, either write the products, no SQL databases or they provide the services, right? But this session is from the different angle. It's from a user. If you are part of a like, if you are a developer, architect, manager, executive at any IT company, and you are looking at No SQL, hearing a lot about it, how do you start? I mean, you have scalability issue. You you are not that happy with other things, but how do you really start and make a change in your organization? So this is more from the user point of view, and how do you apply? How do you change your mindset when you start working about working with NoSQL technologies or big data, and specifically about the scenarios where it can be helpful? I mean, it can solve each and every problem that is there in IT, uh, but it, it 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 can be applied to specific areas, and it is it is really helpful there. So I'm going to share that. A few years back, when I, I started to hear a lot about da big data and NoSQL and MongoDB, Cassandra, everything, uh, I always thought that it's more for search engines and social networks. I mean, it's not for like, at that time, I think I was working with Pearson in learning and education domain. I thought, yeah, it's great, yeah, very good, like for PhD students and for search, search engines and social network. But as I was introduced more and I started using it, like, and one day, like, we, we really decided to go with it. Uh, after using it for a few years, I realized that it can solve problems in every, in any domain, actually. So I, I personally use it in a learning context and educational um, websites, identity and authorization, uh, and, and e-commerce for sure. So, and that's why I thought I should share how, how um, share with everyone that this can ha solve problem in many other areas. And just to give the, some background on staples, I mean, how many of you know staples? I hope you remember. How many of you buy from staples? Or check out on staples and go online and buy it? Um, so uh, for staples, uh, uh, forget about the retail. Just looking at staples.com, it's the second largest website in terms of revenue. So of course, scalability is, is the bigger, biggest um, you know, challenge or one of the key areas, stability and uh, scal uh, scalability. Especially when the holiday season will come, Cyber Monday, Thanksgiving, I mean, th that, is, that is the uh, focus, uh, scalability and stability. So um, I'll just start with some of the context around, around e-commerce. And if you buy online, I mean, you know what e-commerce is. So I think it's not a new domain. But just from the data modeling point of view, I always think of e-commerce as three key entity, and you can disagree with me, but I mean, I always see it uh, revolving around user, product, and order. So for user, why user is important? Because they are going to pay for it. Right? They are going to buy, and you are going to get money from that. And you, we run a lot of uh, analytics and a lot of logic off of user and what they buy. So we divide the user in all this different segmentation. Oh, this is the user. This is a set of users who buy electronics. This, these are the users who will generally um, go for all the printer-related stuff. And we target them with different promotions and couponing and ads. So that's why this user, and there is a lot of things. I mean, I just try to capture the main entities, but there are a lot of other entities that goes with the user. Uh, product, uh, and, and again, for the use, as I said, we do a lot of things with user, and I, I mean, there are many users so for the client of the website. I mean, we need scalability for this part of the system. Now I go to the products. So product is all the SKU or SKU set that we sell in e-commerce so website, and it is part of category and catalog. Ideally, uh, ideally, product should not be the need that much of scalability because there is a fixed set of SKU or SKU set that you are selling. But with this whole change with marketplace uh, concept, uh, we are allowing all these other vendors to come to our website and sell their stuff. And that's why there are huge number of SKU and SKU sets on the website. And that's why even product is, 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 is an entity that needs scalability for e-commerce. Um, if I go to the third one is order, and you can tie it to the shopping cart because we do a lot of things with shopping cart, shopping cart as well. But the order has it is the it's the final final key when you get the money and you do the checkout and it has all the integrations with the backend system and fulfillment system and 
inventory check and reserve online and pick up. So all of the things are tied to the product order. So that, that is the last push that, that, that's needed to finish the transaction. And order is the place where you really need the transaction. So we'll visit that in, in detail, how it works out with NoSQL. Uh, so this is the very basic data model for e-commerce. Uh, if okay, so if you and and in some of the slides, I mean, I'm just trying to capture the key aspect of the NoSQL adoption. Like, if you are coming from SQL background, like many of us, right? I mean, I'm from I'm coming from SQL background. I studied normalization to that during my engineering, and then used it for five seven years. And I thought I was expert at like doing the normalization. I mean, I can work with business analysis for a few hours and have a perfect data model using normalization. And one day my world turned upside down, and there is no normalization. I have to think <laughs> from other way entirely. So, and that's why I think when you are as a, as a user, as, a, as, as an architect, as a developer, um, going to adopt NoSQL from coming from SQL background, this is the key. You have to just forget about having this normalization <coughs> and start thinking about, like, you have to try to merge all your data and try to see, like, very few number of tables or very few number of core entities. So just take the example of user, right? So if you if you do norm, normalization, like relational database, you will create one table user and put first name, last name, other attributes there. When you come to address, you will see, oh, address, if user can have multiple address, so I should put it in a separate table and have some references here. Uh, for user segment, again, it's, it's a separate table. No, 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 it's, it should not be here. It's a data duplication. So we'll put it in separate table. And whenever we want to uh, get the information across the entities, we'll try to do joins and then get the data. That is the usual way, right? Now forget all about it. <laughs> Go to the NoSQL, and you have to start with this flat entity. So you should you have user, you have first name, last name, address. When you go to address, address is the nested entity of the user entity. So you don't create a separate structure for that, separate document for that. But you embed that and you call it nested entity here and you put it there. The same way, all the segmentation users who buy it, printer, this, that, everything you try to put it here. I mean, I, I should not say everything, otherwise you will have just one document in for the entire table or entire schema. That's not the way. Uh, and we'll go to the next one there. So uh, when we started doing it, we argued a lot. Should we really put user as the nested entity of segment, or should we put segment as the nested entity of user? And and I try I try to find some guidelines like how do we decide per case, right? I mean, I can tell as an architect, oh, for this scenario, it this makes sense, but why? And how do you repeat that uh, for for development? So. Uh, um, uh, I think many others are also calling the same thing as question-oriented schema design, right? You work with your analysts, you work with business people, you find all the action that end user will take on your website, and then you try to identify inputs and outputs. So ideally, you are trying to identify the queries that will run on your system. The key here is that all the parameters of the query should be part of one document or one table or whatever you call in NoSQL terms, right? If you are doing column-oriented, column it should be part of that one structure. Uh, whether how to divide, uh, how to decide nested entities. So, just two examples, and maybe that can give you some answer. So, if you are trying to figure out, most of the time you are trying to figure out what are the products viewed the most in last week. Then you start with the product, and the viewed by uh, users are, are nested entity as viewed viewed by, so that you can you can run the query efficiently. Uh, or if you are interested in what are all the products viewed by the particular user in last week, you are trying to target the user, then you, you can start with the user and put viewed product as the viewed um, uh, column there. So, but but the, the key, you can you can do mistakes here. I mean, that, that's fine. But the part uh, that is important is that all the, all the input and output parameter of the query should be part of the one structure, and that is the, that is the key here. Um, so, so sometimes as a user, like as a as user of technology, you don't really care too much like how Java does the GB, JVM, how they put the variables in heap and all that thing. Like you really sometimes don't really care how does all these databases put uh, share the data in these different partitions. And like you know limited, you want to know limited amount of knowledge so that you can do your work, right? You don't want to know every each and everything about that technology that you are trying to use. But there are a few things you really have to understand about NoSQL before you start using it. I mean, you don't have to know each and everything, but there are two or three key concepts when you design your system using NoSQL. And eventual consistency is one of them. 
I mean, if you are attending all the sessions, I mean, you must be expert at eventual consistency. But we, we have used a relational database for so long that we take this acid properties or transaction management as like default, right? We think, oh, it's always there. But it's not always there when you start with NoSQL. So you have to understand whatever NoSQL technolo technology that you choose, you have to understand whether it have eventual consistency, like weak consistency or strong consistency, like how does it work out? And you have to design your scenarios accordingly. Just to give you a very, very basic example of eventual consistency, what it is, and this is a little bit of non-commerce example, that uh, if you have an account in bank with $100, and you open two browser and fire the event at the same time and try to deduct $60. Uh, if the bank website is using relational database, it can throw error for one of the transaction because it's real time consistency, yeah, immediate consistency. You can get error in one of your session that you don't have enough amount and things like that. But on the other side, if you go to ATM, right? Uh, if you, if you, some way you try to deduct the $60 or $70 from two different ATM, at that time, you can get the money, but eventually you will get some message alert and you, your account will have minus balance. Because the ATM is, 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 a, is a different transaction context, so it can't really have a global transaction across website and ATM. So, I mean, in, at the end, after some time, after delay of few milliseconds or seconds, uh, it, will, it will match up, but it won't be the real-time consistency. In e-commerce, where it's important, like f uh, inventory check, right? If there is only last printer left, uh, and there are two users who are trying to buy the same printer, one of, one of the users should get an error. But it, it might not happen in that way in real time if you are using NoSQL. So you have, to, you have to design your system that way so that you, you don't really deduct your money before you know that there is a, there is a printer result. And I, I can discuss that part in detail at the last. But I think we struggle a little bit when we try to uh, design some of this this type of uh, scenario that really need transaction management using NoSQL. Um, okay, so again I said sometimes you really don't want to know where your data is stored, right? But one key concept that you should know about NoSQL is that uh, your do all of your data, or all of your tables are not in one one server. It's, it's actually divided, it's partitioned, and it's sharded, and it is on this different physical server. It, it makes the life of your IT department, like infrastructure team, very easy because you don't need one beefy server, right? I mean, you can have like few community server and you are, you are good to go. So it, it, it's good in that way. But just on the, uh, uh, just on the logic, logic side, you have to understand that your data is divided here. And that's why, that, that is the reason why you can't do the join. Uh, in, with NoSQL, right? Because the part of your table or part of your documents are, are divided everywhere. So ideally, you can't really do the join very effectively. Um, mostly, you are coding at application layer, uh, but you still have admin and others who are dealing with this configuration and this logic. So that is one more key aspect of it. Um, uh, so, so just just to recap on design uh, guidelines, you have to think about aggregation and nested entities over join. You, when, whenever you say your data is not normalized, you have to be okay with some kind of data duplication because normalization is, is good at that. It will avoid the data duplication. But when you are saying that it's denormalized, there can be some data duplication in your system. You have to understand eventual consistency. Actually, you have to understand the cap theorem. You have to understand you can't get everything. You will either get any two out of consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. So most of the NoSQL uh, technologies let consistency go and focus on availability and partition tolerance. So uh, whatever technology that you choose, you should understand what is the trade-off that you are making out of these three. And then sharding and linear scaling. I mean, sharding is the is the, is the is the mechanism, but what you get is linear scaling, which is which is the key benefit. Um, if I'll go up, uh, how do you really build the e-commerce data model, right? You decided you want to start with uh, NoSQL, and you did some presentation, and your VP, your director, everyone is, oh yeah, yeah, let's let's do it. Uh, how do you really start doing it? And I think there are many other steps in between that, but I I I, I think if the, I mean this is a little bit from the SQL mindset, but Still, if you follow this, you will get the initial data model uh, uh, for, for your NoSQL system. So first of all, you have to identify the operations, the operations that end user will perform on your uh, website. 
you identify all the entities that is referred by that operation. And then you identify the attributes of the entity in context of this operation. And then you identify the relationship between these entities, and, and then you repeat this for all scenarios and combine the design at the end. So the, the, so the example here. Um, very, very basic operations for e-commerce. Find product by category. Or add product to the card. So find product, product by category. It will refer to product and category. Or add product in the card will refer to shopping cart. And what are the attributes that is needed there? So for product is name or SKU, items in stock, price, category, etc. For categories, ID, name, or list of product. Card, same here. Now, what is the key, as I told you? You have to think about all the parameters needed for each operation, and it should be part of the same structure. So you said find product by category, so you need all the, all the input and all the attributes of the product and category in context of that operation part of the same document. And that's how you can match your data model, whether it will work at the end or not. So you can see here product. Product will have SKU, name, price, size, whatever, whatever is, is the key entity for product, but it has category as well. So that you can actually run the query and find product uh, from the category, or you can find the categories of that product. And the card, so add product to the card. So card will have all the card attributes here, but at the same time, it will have product that is added to the card. What is the total of it? What is the user that is owning the card? Things like that. Uh, uh, same here uh, for, for the user. You have all the user, but at the same time, you have segments or products that he bought, card that he have, things like that. Uh, and, and again, I told you, right? You have, to, you have to match. You have to look at each operation or each query and see whether you can find all the answer of that query from any one of your documents. And this is more documented oriented, but you can do the same. Why is a card separated uh, document from user? I can see over here for user, you have a yes. card also. Do, are you duplicating or are yes. you the Duplicating. Analysis? So so if you, we, we are running a lot more analytics and a lot more query on quad, quad, just the card. So every time if we go through the user, it, 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 will, it will add some delay to that. So, and, and, and here for the card, we will not have everything. It will have only a subset of the attributes that, that is needed for, for here. But this card will have everything. And that's why I said, when you do, uh, do the denormalization, there will be some amount of data duplication. You can decide. I mean, it's always a trade-off. You, if you don't want that duplication, you have to be OK with running the query in certain ways. And OK with that. Um, if I go to the next one. Again, I mean, if you have used no, any of the NoSQL, you, I mean, this is no-brainer for you. But I still wanted to give you some real uh, queries or example how, how it can apply to the e-commerce uh, domain. So for example, find product by SKU. Uh, that is still, oh yeah, that is correct. So I'll say, uh, um, that is like db.catalogs.find. And so I mean, I'm just trying to show how, how, how different or how similar it is to SQL. Uh, update the card so it will have some kind of push addition or append kind of thing to the card and it will increment the subtotal and things like that. Uh, find the user by zip code. This is interesting and again this is a whole new topic of using Hadoop but uh, and we'll, we'll visit that but how can you I mean there are there are there are few operations that are information that is data data intensive, right, and time intensive, and that doesn't really work out well for real time queries. But uh, if you want to see some of the trend long term, we really need analytics, and we need some some other mechanism. So this is the example for that MapReduce. If you want to aggregate all total orders by zip code, you want to see how effective our website or our campaign or our couponing in this one particular region. Um, you, uh, you can do map and, and, and then reduce and, and try to run that on orders and find like number of orders by zip code. Uh, actually, uh, if you want to do this for the last two years, you really need map reduce. But if you want to do it for shorter uh, time period, like for a month or less than that, you can still do it with this kind of query. It doesn't take that long. So uh, again. Uh, 
Be because I showed you a lot about MongoDB, just to give another uh, another variation of data mod modeling for e-commerce using Cassandra. And I mean, Cassandra itself a big topic. I can't explain you column and column family and super column and super column family here. But I always think of Cassandra as a recursion of table, right? I mean, if you if you if you have one table and you just take out one column and put another table there, I mean, that that's how I always think of Cassandra data model. And um, so here I try to capture the user as a part of a super column family. So uh, each user consists, uh, will make one row. So one row, each row is consists of one user. So that is the key, user one. The, the value will have again a column family. And in that column family, the first column is products bought, and that will have two products. Uh, then, then cards, that will have products and total both. Um, Again, the second row is, is user two, and the user two is the key, and again, the column family there. So that is how you can do it, and then you have to figure out the whole new syntax for your queries and things like that. Map head of will remain the same. Um, okay, so uh, uh, next I'll go to analytics, but what I want to say for just on the NoSQL part is that as part of this presentation, I'm not trying to take a step at um, best NoSQL technology for e-commerce. I mean, I don't think even I have expertise or even there is a finite answer in, in industry for the best NoSQL technology for any domain per se. I mean, you have to, you have to look at your uh, use cases. I mean, I don't think there is any e-commerce platform can decide one day I want to rewrite whole system, whole site in NoSQL. You really can't do it. You have to think incrementally. So you take subsystem of your uh, website, you take one component, try to use NoSQL and put it out there, see how it goes, and then, so migration is a whole new topic, and you learn from your one uh, one implementation and apply it everywhere. And, and it's, uh, I mean, we are, we are coining that idea, and I, I don't know how everyone feels about it, that maybe we can use different NoSQL technology for different subsystem of our, our website. Um, we have to see how that goes, uh, but um, it's hard to find one NoSQL uh, technology that works for every scenario for such a huge website. So and that is just just to share some of the thoughts that is going on now for for some. Um, I don't have that many slides, so if you have a question, you can ask me. Anyway. I, I have a question. Sure. Coming back on the, on the thing where you said I have the three different ways of looking at the data, I've got the user, blah, blah, blah. And so I have this product, and you had paper, and it was $24. And, uh, but you now have a price increase, $26. So does it happen such that if I happen to have gotten in at the $24, then my shopping cart will say $24, even though somebody else who may have come in, because of the fact it's not mm -hmm. consistent across, they will come up with the, with the $26. Yes. It's so when you don't have uh, consistency, like immediate consistency, this this can be one of the scenario. And what we argued at the hard time is that we, I mean, for, for staples.com and many other websites, they don't really change price in the middle of the day. They do it like one batch at the night. So anyways, we are not doing it real time, so it doesn't matter. Like we can invalidate all the web session at that time whenever we change the price or we can do some logic there. Like one doing that one time thing is easier than doing it like for every second, right? So then, then we thought we are just arguing or we are worried about the wrong problem and that, that was the conclusion. Because generally, there are not many sites who will change the price in the middle of the day. Okay, but also I have, I have price here, I have price here, I have price here. And is, from a data management point of view, how do you know that those are all price that I should, that, that it's all the same thing. And so in one system, there are different uh, prices you're uh, talking no, about? No, no, in, in, in your system, you had, you had basically three different documents, mm -hmm. all had price in it, but you know that those all mean the same thing, those all mean price. From a oh, okay. point of view, how did you know that those are all the same price? How do you keep it consistent that they're all called price? Yes. So actually for most of the uh, e-commerce website works this way, and our website also works this way, that we have a different system, subsystem that we call PDB, like product data management. Uh, and we store all the pricing information there. So most of the price that we'll copy is the done product orders that will uh, save the price for, but ideally we won't have the real price uh, fitting into our NoSQL store. So PDB is an entirely separate subsystem that runs entirely in different, different, different uh, 
what do you call, uh, it, it, it runs out of the website and it just has the integration. So every night it will push the data. After that, the data is read only. So in our website, wherever you are seeing price, it's read only. It's, it's most of the time it's all done. You know, I, either, either uh, a user already bought that product, that paper at that price, and that's why that price doesn't matter, or that is the price for that day. And, and at the night, it will be pushed again. What does it have to be in the morning? Sorry? You, that's what you want to ask. What no, it, no, it's one of those things where you kind of say, I'm, I'm going to work on, on the price mm -hmm. document, right? You're going to go work on the, the, um, a different document, the, the order document, and he's going to work on the, uh, the third document, whatever it was. If we're not talking, how do I know, how do you know to call it price when I call the price and he knows to call it price? How do you keep track of that? So every night the data will be pushed and all no, the data. No, no, but when, even when you defined it, even when you said this is the data that I want, how do you know that you should be calling it price? Maybe you say, oh, I want to call it uh, sale number or you know, whatever. No, no, So the, and that's why we have to decide on this first some basic structure of the of the document. Otherwise, all these different people will refer to these prices differently, and then they can't really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We have to we have to come up with, and that's why I know theoretically we can change the structure in any time we want and all that. But it doesn't work out that well with real scenarios because you have your analytics running on that. <coughs> Today, so, uh, suddenly I decide, oh, this is not price. This is my sales price. It won't work for analytics, right? Because it's running off of that, or some other tools that is running off of that. So yeah, theoretically, yes, I can still change my document structure and do my website will still work, but it will mess up something, and that's the, that. And that's why I'm putting a lot of emphasis on this data modeling. But ideally, if you really um, go to any NoSQL tutorial, anything, they won't talk about schema. They don't talk that much about data model because it's flexible. You can change it each as well, but it doesn't work in real <coughs> scenarios. That's, that's I, I agree with you totally. Okay, but do you have anything that, that, that you kind of either kind of do someplace else or something yes. that you that you keep track of? Price is always called price. Yes. So what? So, so this is our take that for e-commerce, eighty percent of transaction is read only. The uh, user will just go browse, 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 and then they will buy. So what we are trying to do is that we are trying to use, use NoSQL. We are thinking about using NoSQL in those read only uh, scenarios instead of write intensive scenarios. And that's why wherever we are writing the price, that system is still SQL. And, and then we are pushing this here, and then everything is NoSQL, but it's all read, you know. So we, we don't have to worry that much about consistency. Got it. So, yeah. so it's not fully used on Oh, yeah, and, and, that, and that's, the, that's the thing I said, right? I mean, some of, we are, maybe at the end I should say what is, what is actually we are doing, what, I, what is the plan to do, and what is actually done. We, we can't really take our whole website, I mean, it's, it's not possible to take the whole website and do NoSQL, right? We are just trying to look at, new subsystem that we are writing, for example, reserve online and uh, pick up in store. Okay, So we are trying to look at the heart and trying to see how we can use NoSQL in that scenario. So it's, it's a very small subset of things, but we are, we are trying to think about like this big bang just to get an idea how it works out, how can we do data modeling, how does it look like, and what are the areas that can give us the pain point. So that is all. Sure. So uh, you, you talked about data being pushed by the when write happens somewhere else and the data gets pushed over. So have you had any concern over how long that takes and whether you need to bring some pieces of the system down when that happens? So today it works. Uh the, that that way and it works really really well. So every every night something will run and it it will load the data, but it will be enabled exactly at midnight or some some point of time. So it will it will be loaded first, but it will be like enabled for everything like at one particular like 3 a.m. a.m. in the morning. So that I mean we are not really worried about the loading part uh, like how long would it take and things like that. Not 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 worried about that part. Okay. So so basically uh, getting the data across. Um, there, there are a few things that is that is tricky there, but overall, no, I, I don't think it's that big of it because we are doing it one time. Yeah, sure. Um, what is the usage of your NoSQL API? I'm still not able to understand. Yeah, it's, it's for not heavy for are using for posting So, and, and, and maybe we'll go to the next one. So we are looking at the NoSQL technologies for a few a few specific areas, whatever the new areas that we are, and more on analytics side, and more on, I don't know how much you know about tables, but we are using IBM Commerce as our core engine. So, so 
but we are trying to come up with all this new subsystem on cloud and open source and using NoSQL. So that is the new initiative, and we are thinking about all this for, for that. Is initiative. it for order management, posting real time transactions? No, no, no. no. So, so no. these are not your actual documents for cart management. Right? Oh no, no, You're, no. This is just an example. Right? This is exactly. this is not just the this example, but this close, is some uh, this close. is some <laughs> of the blueprint of the things. Okay. And once I'll get more feedback, uh, that can help us going deciding the directions. Good question. I agree with uh, being used to any country of the country, we can be short and if you are risk made, uh, the data has to be stored in the NoSQL and uh, for persistence it has to go and either get stored in Hadoop or in your relational database systems. Right? So for that system to understand that the order is coming from this particular user, it has to be mapped, this ID it has to be tracked with that system. Right? So how do you do that? Very, very, very true, and that's the problem going with the subsystem, right? If you just decide to do NoSQL just for one subsystem, all your other relational system need that foreign key that, that you are stuck with. And that's why you have to have that foreign key and you have to have something which will map your foreign key with this 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 user ID, whatever you're talking about. And that that's one of the biggest challenges we are seeing with this subsystem design and with this migration and things like that. And that's why we are trying to, trying to go with the systems uh, first that doesn't really deal with the core entities, but it will have some, like I give you the example, right? Reserve online and pick up in store or something like that, which is which is really a top player on the core website. And so as of today, you have some kind of a mapping table which maps this uh, NoSQL um, unique keys with your relational database unique keys? Uh, no, no, not today, not today. This is, this is, this is, the, this is the plan. Uh, this is not in production. But we have done very similar at Pearson. I have done very similar at Pearson, and where we were, we are trying to just take the user, just the authentication part, and map it with MongoDB, and everything else was interrelational. But that was true SOA, so we never had the foreign key. It was like it was vertically partitioned, so only there was a separate user uh, schema and web services that we could replace very easily, and uh, user was interacting with all other entities via web service, and that's why it was easy to really take that subsystem and rewrite it using NoSQL. So if we have the application like that, it's, it's easier to just take one part and rewrite it. So I have a question: there. You have a user entity, and over there there is a product spot. That's one to many relationship. So is that product spot only for that particular session or it is a uh, no, also the history out over there? Uh, so you have to decide if you if you if you I mean actually on our website one one user ha don't buy that many different products. They buy the same product in repetitive content, right? Like paper. So they will buy the same paper but like every month or like they buy the quantity will matter but not the t total number of products they bought is uh, it's really that different. But if there are like large number of products uh, bought by one single user, we have to decide like how much data we want to store for that uh, uh, immediate system and how much data we want to store for analytics and long term data. So uh, I mean if it's something like Amazon, they can't really store all the products bought by that user in, in, in your immediate system. So you can decide how much data you want to store. Uh, do you guys take the, um, the data from the NoSQL store and, and merge it with like the order data, for example, which is maybe stored in a SQL store and send it to Hadoop for large scale aggregation? I tell you one thing, whenever we start this migration order, either it will never be turned into NoSQL or it will be the last thing to turn into NoSQL. You know? So that that's for sure. For now, there is. Uh, order is something that, uh, anyways, it's a subsystem we are using Sterling for that. So it's more like a SaaS based vendor product for us. So we are not looking at that, but I, we know all the transactions and complexity around consistency will come into picture when we go to the order. And that's the, we are not m worried more about the checkout and everything because it's all like, all we just punch into Bank of America and get something out. So we are not worried about that part, but we are more worried about the inventory and few other things that really needs to I was actually like more, more downstream towards Hadoop. If you're joining the order data from your SQL store with the stuff in your NoSQL store and, and you know sending all that stuff downstream for Hadoop processing. Oh, we are not doing it now, but that's, that's, that's the one area we are thinking a lot about. So, yeah. so here, right? So what, what is, 
I think I just ran out of time. But what is more important for e-commerce, on one side you have all your sales data, right? On the other side you have all your couponing and promotions and ads and everything. How do you correlate that? And, and, I mean, you want to, you, don't, you just don't want to give away your stuff, right? You want to sell it at the price where user will buy it, but you still make the profit out of it. And that's why all this cross-channel analytics is, is the key. Uh, today for IT, the problem is that there are many across many ways you can sell data, and there are many ways you can target user: retail, uh, tablet app, mobile app, um, web, then web store. There are global other like staples have 34 uh, presence in 34 countries. So how do you how do you really reconcile all this data, and how do you see what is effective and what is not effective? And that's where we are we are struggling. I, I mean, ideally, we can really plug into all these different SQL and write one centralized SQL database or have some ETL and EDW, but it's, it's very, it makes it very, very brittle because if uh, retail or if uh, website will change the data model, all this ETL and everything has to change, everything has to go at once, and it's not scalable. I mean, we get the data like 10 days back, but what if we want to use the data from uh, Black Friday on Cyber Monday, right? I mean, we really need near, near real-time data, and that's why we are thinking about using Hadoop. And if we, if all the system can send that text output or logs, server logs, etc., and we can fit into the Hadoop cluster and run run some MapReduce or Hive, because we still want to store our data long term in SQL if, if we really want to, or something like that. We can still uh, read this text file and have some dashboards, uh, reports, and everything out of it, some conclusion out, out of it. And I think uh, that implementing this will be easier than changing the core website into NoSQL. And this will have immediate uh, uh, success or immediate uh, uh, benefits uh, in terms of that. I don't know how, I mean. In the end, I, I mean, I, I want the feedback on all these things because we are going to build that. Uh, and we are thinking very seriously about that, that part, for sure. Um, again, I, I said I'm not going to compare all these NoSQL technologies, but just just very, very uh, basic overview of challenge advantages and disadvantage of SQL and NoSQL. I think asset properties and this transaction management is the key. We are so used to it, and, and there are many advantages with it. So that is definitely the plus on SQL side, but on the, on the disadvantages, I mean, I, how many of you have tried zero, I mean, how many of you get this push from your management that we should do zero downtime deployment. And always like DML changes are always complicated to manage for zero downtime deployment. Like you, you, you really want to run this DML queries and then fill the other the previous data and fix the other data and then that, that's kind of complicated. So it makes it brittle. It, there, is, there is no real linear scalability to support the massive data volume. And uh, there is, I mean, it, 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 it struggles with the lightweight analytics and things like that. On the other side, NoSQL, great. Well, I mean, uh, you don't have to worry about schema and brittleness. And I mean, it works really well for e-commerce because it's all read. Like most of the things are read. Uh, until and unless user will decide to buy that, it's all read. read, read. So it works really well for that scenarios. Uh, for normal IT, I think the expertise and drive to adopt this new technology and make the changes is, is, is one of the challenges. Like it's not the technical challenge, but it's, it's, it's a challenge for sure, and sometimes uh, limited query capabilities. And I think that is, there is a lot of improvement in last few years in this area. Like, in, I mean, earlier there was not really any access control for NoSQL, but I think uh, all these companies are making progress in that one. And migration is, is the key thing. If you, ha if you are uh, working on a new product, that was the thing with Pearson. I mean, working on new product was, and using NoSQL was, it, it, was, it was easier. But having something that is full grown and really change it to adopt NoSQL is, is, is quite a pain, I said. Again, with Hadoop, you don't have to worry about matching it and mapping it to different SQL and things like that. You can directly process the logs and tags, and it's highly scalable again, the expertise and all other things are, are the challenges here. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask now. I would love to get your feedback if you think something makes sense, something doesn't make sense, this is not the direction I we should go or we should go, uh, please send me an email. Um, this is my personal email, but you can, so dipali.thrivedi.staples.com is another one. And uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you all for listening.